Alright, ask Reddit Thread. What secret did your family keep from you until you were an adult? How did you take it? Should have put serious tag. My goldfish never changed color. I thought he was so special that I'd brag about him to my friends. I didn't react poorly, but that's because I was 23, my dad explained. <laughs> my friend refused to admit her parents did this to her with her hamster. It lived until it was 12. Last time I wrote it lived well beyond its years, Lord Voldemort rose again. But what happened to the fish then? It turned from red to white. It was also bigger and lived outside the tank and played fetch. Proof evolution. Th this means that when his fish died, they'd buy him a new one and they didn't really care about the color. I had always been told that my father took off before I was born, so I didn't want to have anything to do with him. My wife was talking to my mother and she let it slip that my father quite possibly had no idea she was pregnant. Unfortunately, the two people that knew my father was who... wait, the new... Unfortunately, the two people that knew who my father was had dementia, so I will never actually know the name of my father. I was upset that I never really had the chance to see if he did know me or if he was in the dark. My mother changed our names when I was about six or so, so even if I had thought to look for us, he would have found no one by her name around. So what you're saying is, there's a possibility that any one of us is your father? Any idea why your mother would have gone to such lengths to hide your existence? It seems strange that she could have gotten child support. He was probably a really bad guy if she went to lengths to the names change. You never know. I know my father didn't know he was my father for years. No idea why my mother used a man she hadn't been married to in over a year on my birth certificate. It could have been abuse. It could have been she just didn't see him as father material. It could have been a spur of the moment decision. The shitty part is the never knowing you will never know why the actual. Wait, the shitty part is the never knowing you will never why not the actual why. What? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> what they meant is that it doesn't matter why reasons are. I always knew that my dad had a wife previously to my mom and that he divorced her, but had two kids with her that he had been estranged from for 20 years. I was told I was never told the circumstances of the divorce, so a few years ago, I contacted one of my half-brothers on Facebook. When I told my parents about it, they were pissed. They thought I had opened a can of worms with my dad's ex, and that's when they told me what a crazy psycho person she was. I felt so guilty that I was going to subject my parents to the emotional abuse she dealt out only for my bad to talk to his son for the first time in 20 years. I find, I find out that his son's no longer in contact with their mother because she is so crazy. Huge relief for my parents. Now we carry on a relationship with one of my half-brothers. My dad's ex died two years ago, so we never have to worry about her again. Uh, that my sister was a result of my mother having an affair. I wondered why we didn't look alike. Does she know? Yes, it came out of the father and gathering where alcohol was involved. My mom was married before my dad, to a man who came out as gay shortly before they split. My biological mother gave only one child up for adoption, and that was me. Wait, what? My mom was married before my dad, to a man who came out as gay shortly before they split. My biological mother gave only one child up for adoption, that was me. My friend grew up knowing she was adopted, but as the only child in her family, she was absolutely brilliant from a young age. Her adopted parents both worked at colleges, and her intelligence was nurtured by them. They also put so much of their time and resources into helping her flourish. Private schools, all honor classes, straight A's most of her life, skipped a grade, class valedictorian, excellent at piano and violin from a young age, went to Ivy League College. They went looking for her birth mother for medical history right before she went to college and found out their family story. Basically, her mother and father were in an incredibly poor rural town dating in middle school, and her mom was pregnant with her at 14. Her family didn't believe in abortion, made her carry to term, and put the child up for adoption even though she wanted to keep the child and drop out of school. After high school, the two married, moved into a trailer park in town, and had, at the time they met, four sons, none of whom finished high school. She might have felt bad about being the only child given up by that mother before meeting them. She's more grateful for the opportunity she never would have gotten in their case than she is hurt by being singled out. Right before she went to college, four sons, none of whom finished high school. She was the oldest and had only finished high school that year. I had edited the original comment and lost some of the wording. They had four sons at the time. She kept in touch with them occasionally, and none of them ended up finishing high school. They had more children after this meeting, and she never chose to meet or contact with any of the other children because it depressed her. Uh, my grandma, 
My grandpa was six years old. His family tied a rope around his ankle and sent him headfirst down a well so that he could drag up the body of his aunt, who had killed herself. He was the only one that could fit in the well. Grandpa was hard-living son of a bitch. Brought up hard, rode hard, died hard. I never had the least amount of sympathy for him until he told me that. This was about a year before he died. I asked my mom about it, and she said that his mom and dad were vile, abusive people. She had never mentioned anything about it. I understand now a lot more of what made him the man he became. What? My grandpa was six years old. His family tied a rope around his ankles and sent him headfirst down a well so that he could gra drag up the body of his aunt who had killed herself. Oh my god. That's terrible. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, my great-grandma, his mom, was an unbelievably mean woman right up to her death. So, how did the aunt fit down there if only the six-year-old could fit down? Not sure. Maybe they were fat. Maybe that's just what they told him. That seemed most likely. Maybe his dad thought it would toughen him up. Whatever the explanation. He was seriously fucked up in consequence, even telling me about it eight years later. Mom thinks that single event leapt to his crippling alcoholism. I was not about to follow up on it. Uh, we were always told our parents had met at a club. The story was repeated over and over. Turns out, there was a big shame in telling us they had met over classified ads and newspaper. Apparently, the real story that was my dad, who was 5'4", was scurrying the ads looking for a female not taller than 5'3", and found who was to become my mom. They then decided to meet at a brewery. My mom loved the opossum fur on my dad's leather jacket and the fact he owned his own business. After the third date, my mom wanted to break up because when she went to his place, she saw he had a sewing machine and was living with a red-headed man. She thought he was secretly gay. The red-headed man was his brother, and my dad a straight man who loves to cuff his own pants. But that explained the relationship survived, and here I am. That was a tremendous really, uh, revelation once all this came out, and I realized how close I had been to never being born. Had my mom been an inch taller, or my dad had a leather jacket lined with a possum fur? Edit. I forgot to explain that. From my mom's point of view, being redheaded was adding an aura of suspiciousness because she could not believe my dad when he said it was his brother. My dad not being redheaded. The fact he was living with a man was immensely suspicious. I can kind of get that. The events preceding your birth sound like a discarded script from an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> this summer, starring Rob Schneider as the sewing machine. The real question is, how tall are you? I did some digging. I'm a woman of 5'2". Well, being a short woman is not as bad as being a short man. As a, a short guy, I can attest to that. <sighs> Out of interest, how tall are you? 5'2". Man alert, alert, this is the first thing that happened in my head as well. My parents did a lot of cocaine in the 80s. Mom stopped when she found out she was six weeks pregnant with me. Dad didn't stop until something scary happened to her a year later. Obligatory. Did not expect this edit. Oh my god, why did I read that? We probably almost OD'd. Or like, got kidnapped by drug dealers or something. Something other cool that would make a neat movie. Or an episode on Breaking Bad. I thought I was a mistake baby, considering my mom had me when she was 18. Then, after I got to see my dad for the very first time in 20 years, he was like, when I was 17, your mom asked me to get her pregnant. I also learned that they weren't even in a relationship. She was dating a slightly older guy who was in the army and would send her money. I also learned that as soon as my mom was successfully pregnant, her and my grandma basically ran my dad off and said that he wouldn't be able to support us. I ran this by my mom and she confirmed everything. I still know how to process it because it's so weird. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Your poor dad. <laughs> What? I mean, yeah. But jokes on my mom and grandma. He makes a decent chunk of change and has been pretty successful since then. Nowadays, my mom is a bit salty because she doesn't get any Happy Mother's Day messages. Uh, that the disappearance of my rabbits wasn't my fault when I was little. Turns out I actually did close the door on the rabbit house instead of leaving it open, allowing them to escape. All an elaborate lie. My grandpa just ate them instead. What? My mother had the same experience. She had a pet rabbit as a child and loved it dearly. It went missing, and then it turned up in their freezer, ready to be cooked. A snake got in the house when I was around five. At that age, I was waking nearly every night due to nightmares slash terrors involving snakes. My mom never said anything until I was grown and we had long moved out of the house. She said that they never found it. A snake got into the house when I was around five. They had never found it. How is that bad? 
Uh, if they never found it, how do they know it was there? My mom watched it wriggle into the patio door in panic, tried to catch it. It went between some furniture and the wall. She told my dad, and they vowed they would never tell me. I was waking them up on the regular, and I bet they were more worried about how I'd react than actually have it in their home. Uh, my parents and I were having a conversation about how they managed to raise four kids on a pizza delivery man's wages. Turns out my parents were drug dealers. When my favorite Sesame Street blanket vanished when I was four, it was because their friend got arrested for drugs and her van got impounded. Was it real drugs or just weed? Cocaine, qualads, and yes, weed. They dabbled in pills. Not really a secret, although it turns out a distant relative was on the FBI's most wanted list for a while. Whoops. Not that they kept it from me. I was just slow, I guess. My dad was an everyday pothead. Everyone knew but me. I didn't find out until my mom had to bail out of jail one time because he was pulled over in a school zone with a bag of weed. Someone set him up or something. After that, I started to notice that he also abused prescription drugs. He died of a heart attack about three years ago. Pretty sure it had something to do with the prescription drug abuse. I was sad, but at the same time, I kind of had a feeling that he's wanted to die for a while. He wasn't happy, and his death was a possible suicide. Always knew my uncle was a weird, weird dude. I had posted about it before. Another uncle of mine just let the cat out of the bag that the weird uncle had too much uh, anesthetic as a child and pretty much stunted his mental capacity since he was 16-ish. Explains a lot. My great-great-aunt was lobotomized and lived most of her life in an insane asylum. She was raped by an orderly and they made her go through the pregnancy. I have a much older cousin because of this and he found my family and comes to Christmas and stuff like that now. Her family was never told of the pregnancy and was just told that she didn't want to see them when they came to visit. The cousin lived in foster care for his childhood and only recently was able to get information to link him to us. The reason it disturbed me so much though, I have pretty severe mental problems and for a long time I was told you're going to end up just like your aunt without further explanation. I always thought it was a hyperbolobe, but now that I know the story, it upsets me that my family thought I would end up like that. Well, just don't get lobotomized and you'll be fine. Uh, that's a terrible thing to say, especially to a child. I'm sorry you had to go through that and I hope you're doing well now. I recently found out my mother had been married before my father. Her ex was super abusive and she's even uncomfortable when someone has the same name as him. And my grandparents' dog had actually used to be his dog. I'm surprised how much she loved that dog. I had always assumed that I was unplanned pregnancy because my parents would always say things about how they never had expected to have kids. But it turns out that was because they desperately wanted a child. My mother experienced four miscarriages in a very short time before getting pregnant with me. It made me cry to know how hard she had tried to have me. Huh. Not really a secret, but a whole chunk of my family tree were completely unknown to me until I was like 16, 17. I only found out when my family made amends to old drama. I had an uncle who was never quite right. It was common knowledge that he had a mental plate in his head from an injury in the war, World War II. Learned after I got older that the injury was not combat related and was led to believe, but rather from a fight after a poker game during the war. <laughs> Apparently, they kept me from the fact that they're certifiably insane. Uh, when I was an adult, they finally told me the story about the family curse. Supposedly, my paternal grandfather was married to another woman for about two years before he met my grandmother. Legend has it that she went to some witch doctor and did some stuff that must have suspiciously brainwashed him to leaving his wife or his mistress. When the original caught wind of this, she was furious. In that day and age in that country, divorce was a black stain and pretty much guaranteed that you'd be alone and miserable forever. Supposedly, she went to see another witch doctor and cast a curse upon the family to ensure that any child born from the lineage would suffer in life. They all believe this to be true, and in what I suppose is a self-fulfilling prophecy, all but two of my dad's siblings are divorced. One came close and was separated for a while and got back together before fully separating again. And he, by some stroke of luck, managed to keep my mom around. Some of my cousins absolutely trust this as fact and are convinced they are destined to have a bad life because of some witch doctor did in the 1930s. Oh wow, these people are dumb. But did any of this witch doctor's chants go ooh, eh, ooh, ah, ah? Dude, you have to finish the whole chant or become cursed too. Ting, ting, walla, walla, bing, bang. I have a brother, or at least I might have a half-brother out there somewhere. 
My mom and dad divorced when I was about three. Never saw my dad again. Found out when I was 18 that my father might have had another son after the divorce. Never knew his side of the family, so I have no way of knowing if it's true or not, or how to get in contact with my brother if it is true. I was raised an only child and don't really know what to think about it when I do think about it. Also, my dad died because he killed himself, so that's a thing. When my mom was in her 20s, an uncle of hers tried to rape her. Needless to say, I wanted to burn his house down, but my dad had already beat him up so bad he moved out of town. We're talking 30 years ago, and I found out six months ago. I know who he is, and if I see him, I'm sh not sure how I would react. Uh, one or 300 kicks to the testicle works. That my younger sister was adopted. It took a huge hitting on me when I learned that. The one I loved the most besides my parents isn't biologically related to me. Right from the start, I felt extremely betrayed by my parents and hated them for not telling me the truth earlier. But soon I realized that even though my sister and I are not blood related, the bonds we had over the past two decades transcend the need for blood ties for us to still be brothers and sisters. Not gonna lie, <laughs> I was expecting that to end with you banging your sister. I mean, it is a possibility. Family is who you wanted to be, not who you're related to. Uh, that's my grandmother's special friend of 30 years was her boyfriend and he was married. That my parents and aunts, that my parents and aunts and uncles all ho hopped on the cocaine train in the 80s, but didn't hop off again until about 2008. Older brother dropped the bomb on me and it explained so much. Sigh. When I was about nine, I had some goldfish. I had those goldfish for a long time. My mom didn't tell me the story until I was much older. One day, she was replacing the water for the goldfish and she added a new water to the tank. I'm not sure how it happened, but she accidentally poured boiling water into the tank. All the goldfish died. Their eyeballs burst and they burnt a slow death. I was at school during this, so my mom went to the pet shop, bought more goldfish, and replaced them before I got home. I never noticed a thing. How do you accidentally pour boiling water into a fish tank? Isn't the normal reaction to check the water is good temperature first in any situation? Oh, poor goldfish. I was never really told why my parents got divorced. My mom has always told me that she'll tell me when I get older. I'm 23 though, I don't think I'm ever going to find out, but I honestly might prefer it that way. I'm not going, it's not going to change anything. My daughter still asks why her dad and I split. I tell her the same thing. I'll tell you when you get older. We just didn't get along. That's all I need to know. I figure that's better than the truth. Yeah, your dad liked to beat my ass and violently rape me, so I deuced out. Sometimes the truth doesn't help anyone. My great aunt was actually my great grandmother. My aunt had given birth to my grandmother at age 14. So her parents raised my grandmother as her own to hide the teenage pregnancy and my grandmother being an Ill illegitimate child. This was in the Deep South in 1930, so it would have been a huge ordeal. What? My aunt had given birth to my grandmother at age 14. Oh. Okay, so I'm a bit late to the party, but this is a really cool story. So, my great-grandpa was a rum runner during Prohibition and never got caught, so he was pretty wealthy. Owned an island on one of those great lakes between U.S. and Canada, just to give you a picture. So, as he got older, a gold digger came along and married him, and he slipped into dementia. She got all the paperwork switched to her name. To be even more of a dick, my grandpa had a rare coin collection in the family safety deposit box that she switched out just regular coins. Well, anyways, after great-grandpa passes, it comes to light that she took everything and it pissed my grandpa off royally. I don't know the full extent of the legal stuff, but he managed to still get a good portion of what was left, and it pissed off the gold digger. She thought if she could off my grandpa's family she could get the rest. This led to multiple scary events, one being a hitman trying to run over my grandma with a Cadillac. She jumped into a stone doorway of a building and the car smashed right into her. Thankfully the stone stopped it and the bumper of the car broke one leg and messed up her knee. Their house would also get random phone calls stating that their kids, my mom and her brother and sister, would be wearing and what street and they hung up. This led to my mom and siblings getting a police tail on their way to school because of a relative was a cop. I really don't know how it all ended, but I know biker club my grandpa was in got involved and finally got the gold digger back to town. It finally got the gold digger to back down. It also explains the extended family on the, that side, so there are a lot of relatives that I never know that existed. Hmm. She sounds like an awful, awful person. When I was 15 years old, my mom told me my dad was married man that she used to work for. She worked as a nanny for his three children with his wife. He didn't know I existed. 
Oh, uh, when I was 15 years old, my mom told me my dad was a married man that she used to work for. She worked as a nanny for his three children with his wife. My future wife had a pretty big one. When she was a kid, there was about six, seven year gap where her dad was never around. Her mom always told her he was traveling for work but would send her letters. When she was about 20, she found out that her dad was heavily involved in organized crime with one of the Italian families out of New York. Apparently, he's a made guy and everything. The gap was because he was in prison during that time for racketeering and shaking down businesses in Long Island. It basically destroyed her family and her. Her brother and her mother had to go on welfare. Her parents got divorced and she never really contacted with her dad until recently. He left the mob life not too long ago, ostensibly, and he's a pretty nice guy to me, but I don't really understand why mob life is so glorified. It completely destroys lives. Who glorifies mob life? Uh, that my mom's ex-husband was a meth head near the end of their marriage. She divorced him when I was in 8th grade or so. I remember him looking scabby and being really thin, but he'd always kind of been like that. He was also a huge asshole, and I think he resented that he and my mom didn't have a kid together, and he had to deal with me instead. What? He's still a fucked up last time I checked. I think he's had a couple of DUIs and has been arrested for numerous things. I just like to make sure his life still sucks every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, when I was about six or seven, I told my father, I was told my father wasn't around because he was killed in a hit and run. Turns out my mom, who didn't raise us and wasn't around either, was just sleeping around and didn't know who he was. Yeah, my childhood was pretty fucked up. Uh, I didn't know my older brother was my half-brother until I was like 18. It turns out my mother was engaged to somebody before my dad, and when she became pregnant, he turned abusive, so she left. She was a single mom for a couple of years before she started dating my dad and they got married, within a year, and are coming up on 25 years together. It didn't really change how I see my brother at all, but it was just strange because I had never thought that my older brother was my half-brother, even though he and I are very different. My older sister is a result of my mother's first marriage. I was scan reading I thought you'd said as a result of your mother's first miscarriage. That was a hell of a double take. My mom's stepmother was extremely abusive to her, I have posted before, and eventually tried to kill her and her sister, and very nearly succeeded. Oh, I'm gonna end it here. Looks like there's a police helicopter outside giving orders. <laughs>